Hi, welcome to my studio. Uh, this is Miss Flug down in my basement <laughs> going to demonstrate to you how to work on the potter's wheel for the first time. I know that some of you are really excited about trying to throw on the wheel and I can't wait for you guys to get back into the studio so that you can uh, practice what you're gonna see today. Uh, I'm gonna turn my screen down now so that you can see my wheel. And you probably won't see my face for a little while because of that. Okay. First, the wheel always rotates in a counterclockwise to position. The reason for that is that when I center the clay, I am pushing against it with the palm of my left hand. Okay. All right. First, I need a bat. A bat is sometimes wood, minor plastic, and I have these pins on the wheel that I am going to put through these holes. I did stick a little bit of clay down here to help this move, not move around as much. Sometimes the bats kind of move. So I'm gonna push that on, I'm gonna rotate a little bit so that you can see me just a little bit better. Well, that's better. Okay, and my foot, has a pedal, just like a gas pedal in a car, and I push further or uh, slower in order to regulate the speed of the wheel. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off that little bit of extra clay. And I'm just chipping it off to clean it off. Uh, mo a lot of people sometimes uh, add a lot of water to the clay. I don't really think that's a great idea. If you see people adding water to the clay, a often the clay does not stick to the wheel. So I'm going to take my wire cutter and I'm going to slice a piece off. And for us starting out, a good size is about the size of like a baseball or an orange. I don't recommend using anything larger than that in the beginning. The larger the piece, the harder it is going to be to center. This is a square piece of clay or a rectangular piece of clay. I can center that. For you guys, it's better to start by making this into a rounded ball kind of a shape because you will find that that is a lot easier to work with. You want to try and get the clay into the center, but I do have to kind of slam it on there so that it sticks. Okay, now I'm going to start by wetting my hands. Okay, I want all my hands wet, not just the fingertips, because I'm really going to use this part of my palm of my left hand to really get that clay into the center. How do I know when it's centered? Right now, my hands are moving all over the place. When my hands no longer move, the clay is centered. Now, tricks to doing that. You cannot just like leave your elbows wide like this and get expect to be able to center the clay. You need to anchor your body. So the best way to do it is to get the wheel going full speed. My left elbow is going kind of where I bend. It's going to be like in the crease of my body and i'm really going to put a lot of force i don't know if you can really notice but i'm like on top of this i can't move my chair or my body any closer to this wheel and that's really where you need to be because i'm going to put a lot of pressure inward and you can kind of see that that clay is rising when i do that okay normally when i center i put my opposite hand my right hand on top so that the clay doesn't come flying off. If I keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, you can see that it's getting thinner. I have to push it down or I'm gonna cut it right off, okay? So again, if I knock it off center, you can see that my hands are rocking, right? When I go back to center the clay, I push in and a little bit down. And you can notice now that my hands are no longer moving around and the ball of clay is in the middle of the wheel. Okay, I didn't mention it, but as I was doing that, I continued to wet my hands. When your hands get dry, 
you get like a friction and the clay sticks to you and you don't have as much control. So you want the clay to glide through your fingers easily. So I'm gonna continue to wet my hands. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a small opening. I'm gonna kind of make it so you can see it because when I put my thumb on it, I can't really always do that. So my thumb is going to go on that. I'm gonna lean my forearm into my leg because no matter what I'm doing, I'm trying to send, uh, steady my body because the wheel, if the wheel takes me around and moves me all over the place, then the clay is not gonna be where I want it. It's gonna be off-centered, it's gonna be wobbly. So I'm gonna put my thumb right in that little hole. It's a little hard for you guys to see this part. And I'm gonna push straight down. So what I was actually doing when I did that was I was taking my thumb and pushing it straight down through the middle of the clay. It's a little hard because I can't really pick up the computer. Okay, so now I have an opening here in the clay that's about that big. I want to widen that but I don't wanna widen it bigger than the ball of clay is to start. I'm gonna try and raise this up just a little bit. So let me put something underneath the computer. Maybe I can get you guys a different view. Okay, let's try that a little bit. All right, so now you can see the top of the clay. Okay, and you can see how I made my thumb hole in the center. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna widen that hole. I'm gonna make it probably about, right now it's about an inch. I'm gonna make it about three inches wide. My left hand is going to rest against the side of the clay. I'm also pushing that down into my leg so that I can steady myself. I put two fingers inside and I pull the wall from the bottom out wider. Okay, my wall is straight up and down in there. When I pulled those fingers, they came directly towards my palm and the wall moved out. So the bottom, it looks like this. It's like a straight piece. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do, I like to hold a sponge, which I don't know where it went. Here. I like to hold a sponge in my outside hand. My inside hand is going to go inside here, all the fingers, and I really do most of the work with my uh, middle finger. That middle finger is going to be where the pressure is against the sponge. So I'm gonna put those fingers in. I do bend them slightly. I try and call it like the claw, like you have to be very, very stiff. It's difficult to watch that in a video, but when I'm working, my body is so tensed up that I am really like not allowing myself to move. So I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure with my sponge and my inside middle finger is right opposite that sponge and I'm bringing the clay up, straight up, all the way up, all the way up, all the way up off the top of the clay. Now you can see the bridge that I'm making with my thumb, like resting my thumb on that sponge that's really helping me to steady my left hand so again i'm going to go down to the bottom and raise this up a little bit of pressure you can see the nice even rings there as i get towards the top i do have to back off on my pressure if i push too hard i'm going to rip right through the clay now, if you think about it, the wheel is rotating in this direction. The point at which I'm centering, I'm really pushing against the clay is like banging into me on this side. Over here, I'm working on this side because this is where the clay most easily glides through my fingertips. So when I'm raising the clay up, I always do it over on, at three o'clock on this side, if this were a clock. So I'm gonna bring that up slowly. And as I get towards the top, I'm still applying a little bit of pressure, but I'm being kind of light with my pressure. 
My, my top got a little bit off centered as I was pulling it up. So I'm going to get a needle tool. And I'm going to trim that top. So again, always trying to steady my arm. So I'm going to try and hold this as close as I can. Think about what you're doing. If you're holding this from afar away, you don't have as much control as you do if you're holding it closely. So I'm going to just hold it there. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to draw a line on the wall and it goes kind of quickly. So I'm just going to keep the needle tool in the same spot. When I see the needle tool come through on the other side, I'm going to lift it up and that piece of clay is going to come with me. I have to cut at least a quarter of an inch of clay when I do this. There it is, and I take it off. Okay, so what I just did was I leveled out that top edge, and then I like to take a sponge to it. Okay, now I have a nice straight wall to my cylinder. This isn't going to be a very tall piece because I didn't have a lot of clay to start with. And like I said, growing larger is something that you have to practice at. It's not something that you can do in the very beginning. Okay, all right, so you can see that little flare at the bottom there. I like to take that out, and I like to use a modeling tool, a wooden tool that has an angle on it, and I take that angle and kind of put it right up against the side of the wall and just cut straight down when I do that, okay? Then I take that angle and put it flat against the back and take that out. Sometimes I have to do it a couple of times to get that to be cleaned up. Now, this is just a straight walled cylinder. Uh, in the beginning, most of the time, we're just trying to get control over the clay. And it's difficult to sit down at the wheel and just make whatever you want to make. <clears throat> so. If I wanted to change the shape of this, if I wanted the bottom to come out, I would adjust my pressure. So instead of me pushing inward with my sponge, I would allow the wall to move outward and I would push outward with my fingers. So I'm gonna go into the same exact spot that I was. I'm gonna apply a little bit of pressure from my inside hand and the sponge is going to allow that to happen. And then as I move up, I'm going to change the pressure and push inward. And then maybe I'll push it out again. So depending on whatever the shape is, it all has to do with the, the pressure. Now, a couple of things as far as looking at this piece, one thing that you have to think about is now my walls are going to be thinner than where you are going to be just because uh, I've had a lot more experience. So this is a little bit thin, but you can see, there's some water in there. You can see uh, how the piece uh, has an even thickness to the walls. You can see that the edge is kind of an even thickness. But all of that comes with experience and it just uh, gets a little bit easier with practice. Okay, so I'm gonna push this back. I hope you enjoyed my throwing demo. I will see you soon.